Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kira and I do videos on faith and following Jesus. And I've been reflecting on habits that I created early on in my life that as I look back, following Jesus for 10 years now, that I'm really grateful I did. And I wanted to share those today because you can start habits at any age. And these are some that over the course of 10 years, it's a long time, I have seen really change my walk with Jesus for the better and grow me. And the first of those is prioritizing reading my Bible every day as early as I can. Now, throughout 10 years, I've had a lot of different life stages that's taken me from high school to college to post-graduation to getting married, having a baby. Um, and so let's look different in all those seasons. In high school, I would wake up super early before I needed to get out the door for school. So around like six. College, I had more time in the morning. So I'd like wake up at seven, um, got married. I had more time. I worked from home um, part-time. So it was just like, as long as I wanted it to be, I could go to a local coffee shop and do it. And then in the stage of being a mom and working full-time, <laughs> it's as early in the day as I can do it. It's not always first thing, but definitely by lunchtime, I prioritize reading my Bible. And that's for at least 15, 20 minutes a day. And I always say that because otherwise it's like, I'm looking at it, but I am not... <laughs> engaging with it and one thing that a bible um school teacher told me was we need to pray before we read the bible we need to ask god to reveal himself through his text that we are not just reading a book that was written centuries ago but we are reading the living word of god and so we need to read it as such asking the holy spirit to give us insight and discernment into what is written and what it means for us today and what god is speaking to us second going off of that is getting in Christian community, getting involved in a church. Um, I've gone to several different churches during that time. Everything from like a small church of like 300 people to a church of like 10,000. So um, <laughs> I have been a part of a wide spectrum and I can honestly say from all those different experiences, you need to find community. Being at a church of 10,000, you definitely need to find them. And it's really hard when people are just in and out, but you need to seek out opportunities to meet people. And I guess your Christian community doesn't have to come from church. Um, I work for a Christian organization and have, and have become really good friends with some of my coworkers. But I think having your community base with church is especially fun because then you guys get to sit in together, serve together, you're listening to the same preacher every week so you can talk about the sermons. So if you can get involved in a life group or something you can, um, if you can just make yourself extroverted and start talking to people at church, that's always good too. Um, but be a part of a young adults group or a life group or serve at church. Um, but find a community that is going to build you up and... This hit me so hard the other week where we are so blessed by our community here in LA and we don't have family who lives out here and so our friends have become like family and we had a moment last week where we didn't have a babysitter for our baby and my husband and I both had to go into office that day and we texted some uh, we texted our mentors and we we're just like hey like do you have any availability and they graciously totally rearranged their schedules so that they could take our son for the day and that's when it struck me as like that's community that these are the people that you do life with not just like on Sundays or one day of the week, but that you actively do life with continuously. These are the people that you can share anything with, that you can pray for. Um, these are the people that show up at the hospital with you and pray. These are the people who hold you when you're crying, that, that you're texting them when something exciting happens and they celebrate with you. Like that's what Christian community is supposed to be and that you can rely on one another and that is just life changing. It also just grows you spiritually because I think it reflects the heart of God and what he intended for the church. And whether you go to a big church or a small church, everyone needs that sort of community. 
Going along with that is mentorship. I have been mentored since I was 14. And I've had two different mentors now. Um, I had one all throughout high school and partially through college. And then my husband, whom when I was dating at the time, I started being mentored by his mentors, a couple that we absolutely adore and love. Um, as we were going through dating and talking about getting married and to this day they are still our mentors and we talk with them multiple times a week if not every day and these are people who are further along in their faith journey than you are who can encourage you and give you perspective and wisdom that comes from seeing your situation from the outside and not having the emotions of being in the situation with you that these are people who love jesus with everything they have and want to see god's best on your life and want to encourage you and push you towards that so highly recommend look around your church look around for good godly christians that you're like they're further ahead on the journey than me they can help lead me and give me guidance watch to see if they have the fruit of the spirit in their lives that's so key Look, see if they display love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in their lives. And ask them if they would mentor you. And if they can come alongside of you and give you important perspective and pray over you and help you make decisions. Um, we do this all the time. We had <laughs> um, a really awesome opportunity come up last minute um, just a week ago. And it required us to make a pretty big financial decision like within a day and the first thing we did was we prayed together my husband and I and then we called our mentors and we said hey what do we do you know where we're at you know where what our goals are you know what our values are does this align should we do it and having someone who you know is not like in the super excited mindset that you are and just like sees it in all glitter and rainbows but who can look and say you know i see the positives but you know maybe we should consider these aspects as well um someone who's going to tell you the truth whether you want to hear that or not and then be willing to take the advice um so those are kind of my top ones that immediately come to mind when I think about habits I started early on that have changed my walk with Jesus for the better. And I guess this would also fit in with that, but um, exercising and eating healthfully. For me, taking care of my body does so much in making me the best person that God's called me to be. Prioritizing eight hours of sleep a night because that's what I function really well on. Um, that those things create self-control in my life that choosing not to eat dessert five days a week <laughs> um grows self-control in my life that choosing to go to bed at a certain time every night even as an adult when no one is telling me i need to creates self-control that seeps into every other area of your life and then working out my goodness i push myself sometimes i like hit workouts i like you know endurance things that like really push me but i enjoy that because not only does it keep me healthy and my heart strong but it develops endurance and perseverance which I think is so key that you can't learn these things in comfort you have to learn them in discomfort by putting yourself in controlled situations to do this and so I have found that whenever I prioritize working out and that's not every day it's a couple times a week for me right now in the season and that fluctuates over time but choosing to work out not only just takes care of and stewards the body that God gave me, but it teaches me endurance. When the workout is hard and I want to quit and I want to stop and say I'm done, I don't. But instead, I keep going and I say, okay, God, give me the strength. I can do this. Here we go. And press on through, which teaches me endurance that I take into every other area of my life because there are some things we have to endure that we're just not a fan of, but we have to press on through. So I pray this is an encouragement that it um, just gives you some perspective and wisdom on, you know, hey, what can I put as goals in my life that I want to start making habits. And so if you have any questions, leave them down below. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing rest of your week.